July 2018, an image is circulating on the internet. That's not unusual, of course. Trillions of images are floating around the World Wide Web on any given day at any given moment. Some distressing, some calming, all confined to the online world we're increasingly living in today. This photo, though, came prepackaged with a story that would cause widespread panic. It was a picture of a strange bird-like woman named Momo. In a vacuum, with no outside information, this picture is pretty creepy. This is Momo. In 2018, a story started circulating that this person, entity, ghost, or others using her name, were initiating chats with kids all over the world. Once in the chat, they would reportedly convince the children to call on a cell phone. From there, the person claiming to be Momo would make them complete a series of tasks threatening grave punishments if they were to fail. The tasks reportedly started simple enough. Watch a horror movie, sit in a dark room for 10 minutes. The tasks would then ramp up, drown your family pet, cut off your finger, kill yourself. Parents were instantly distressed that this could be happening in their houses right under their noses. Who was Momo? Were they a lone entity or a group of malicious actors preying on the safety of children? Many surmised that Momo was a kind of supernatural force that preyed on children. On July 25th, 2018, the worst fears around the Momo challenge seemed to come to fruition. A 12-year-old girl in Buenos Aires hung herself in her family's backyard. Her cell phone found nearby. An investigation found that she had been chatting with an older teen on WhatsApp, and that person was now being sought by police. The plan, as far as police could tell, was that the older teen was playing the part of Momo, cataloging what happened with the young girl on social media up until she took her own life, as a way to legitimize the Momo mythos. The media set out to find out who or what Momo was, and were left generally stumped. The internet is a big place, and finding the one kernel of truth in an internet challenge is impossible at worst, extremely difficult at best. And then, the warnings started going out. The Independent, The Guardian, YouTube, law enforcement agencies, and even Kim Kardashian were advising parents to watch out for Momo. Reports emerged that Momo had been spliced into kids' content on YouTube, flashing on the screen with images and sounds of brutal violence, along with calls for the child to harm themselves. YouTube stepped in and stated that they could not find any instances of this happening, but, for safety's sake, demonetized all videos that even mentioned Momo. Like most internet challenges, Momo seemingly faded away near the midpoint of 2019. That is, after the film deals were made, the books were written, and every ounce of mystique or danger had been wrung from it. While it's pretty well agreed that Momo is not in fact some kind of vengeful spirit intent on killing young people, it did pose a very dangerous, very real threat. At its core, the Momo Challenge was a way for hackers to collect information through intimidation aimed towards kids. The North Ireland Police Department put out a very sensible warning about Momo reflecting that theory. They wrote, Even basic open source research suggests that Momo is run by hackers who are looking for personal info. As creepy as she looks, Momo isn't going to crawl out of your child's phone and kill them. But... What is that thing in the picture? The spindly, bird-like woman staring ahead with grim coldness. Well, 
It's an art piece created by Japanese special effects house Link Factory in conjunction with artist Keisuke Iso. The company had no hand in the viral challenge, and if you're worried that Momo is skulking around out there somewhere, you should know that the sculpture began to decompose and was discarded in March of 2019. As far as we know, it's gone forever. The most important takeaway from the Momo challenge is that the internet, as useful and wonderful as it is, can be a dark place. Keep an eye out, because fictional monsters have a tendency to hide real life monsters. But, what do you think? Was there a malicious supernatural entity preying on children? Or was it hackers using a sculpture to threaten our most vulnerable? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Dread Unsolved. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. If you like this content, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.